All right, so we're going to talk about PSMA diagnostics and therapies. The first part is diagnostics. The second part will be therapies, and I promise to get done in less than 20 minutes for both of them. Um, clearly, it's becoming the standard of care. Um, here are my disclosures. And, you know, when we're talking about diagnostics, I think it's important to, to start off talking about why it's so important, why this uh, landscape is really changing. And number one, conventional imaging is not sensitive or specific. It's something that we've all lived with for the past decades, but we've just had to put up with it rather than it being a tool that really helps us push the envelope forward. We also know that prostate cancer is going to progress in about 30 to 40 percent of patients after initial treatment. So when I hear this statistic, there's not one thing that hops into my mind. Number one, we probably have a much better opportunity to pick patients better before definitive treatment. And that's important. And if they do recur, there's clearly an opportunity to be able to manage those patients better and maybe even potentially cure more of these patients. And number three, I think in our heart of hearts, we all believe that there are meaningful improvements in clinical outcomes with earlier interventions. But we need to make those interventions earlier more uh, sophistic, be more smarter about making those interventions. And I think uh, PSMA imaging helps us do that. So conventional imaging techniques, when we talk about conventional imaging, it's really bone scans and CTs. Um, they've served us well for the past decades, but uh, clearly they're, they're not where we need to be. So this is something that Dave will talk about later is, but instead of calling it NGI, we've now moved forward to calling it MTI. So in the Radar 7 article, we talk about molecular targeted imaging, just to reflect on the fact that it's no longer next generation. It's, it's current, it's here, it's contemporary, it's very quickly becoming the standard of care. So if you haven't been ordering this in your practice, I really think you need to sort of jump on board because it's, it's, it's moving quickly. <clears throat> and when we talk about PET, we're really talking about a modality. We're talking about, um, I make the metaphor to the iPhone. So the iPhone is the hardware, but you really get the functionality based on the apps that you run on the hardware. PET is the hardware, and you really get the functionality based on what you inject into the patient, the radiopharmaceutical, which is the software. So when you order PETs, you need to be very careful about what type of PET you're ordering. So if you're in a practice and you're seeing a patient, you just don't write PET for prostate cancer. Specify PSMA PET for prostate cancer. Uh, even better, PSMA PET for initial diagnosis, you know, high-risk prostate cancer, or biochemical recurrence, give PSA levels, give as much history as you can, especially if you're sending a patient to an outpatient freestanding center. But stepping back, make sure you specify what radiopharmaceutical you're requesting, because I've seen a lot of mistakes being made in this, in, the, in this space. So PSMA stands for prostate-specific membrane antigen. It takes advantage of the fact that there is this membrane receptor that is overexpressed in prostate cancer and prostate cancer or prostate cells. Um, you see it attaches and then it gets internalized. And this isotope that you attach to the small molecule really gives the functionality of the test. So if we put um, a gallium or, or an F18 isotope, then it serves as a, as a flashlight. It helps us see things and diagnose things better. If we put like a lutetium or actinium here, then it serves as a missile or a bomb, and it can actually kill the prostate cancer cells. And that's the whole idea of theranostics, um, the ability to sort of see and treat uh, in the same way. So this is PYL data. Um, and the take home point from this graph is, this chart is that at low PSA levels, we have detection rates that we've never seen before in the past. So at a patient with biochemical recurrence, if they came into your office and they had a PSA level of let's say 10, and you ordered a bone scan and CT, more often than not, that bone scan and CT was negative. All of a sudden, you have this PET CT using PSMA, in this case, PYO, and if you have a PSA level of less than 0 0.5, your detection rate is 60%. So in 60% of those patients, they're going to be able to detect something on that PET CT. And if the PSA level is over, over 2, your detection rate is over 90%. Again, this is unheard of. This is why it, it's been so disruptive and so welcomed into the community just because the performance is so much better. So then when you compare PSMA PET versus flacyclovine in this trial from Jeremy and colleagues, head-to-head um, -head study, I think this confirmed what a lot of us were seeing just 
based on our own experience, that PSMA PET detects more lesions than flocicoline did. And in this study, it was greater than two times the number uh, of cases. Maybe there's a little bit better performance in the prostate bed, uh, but I think that's something that we need to study more before we start using it more routinely to, to evaluate local recurrences. This comes from a review article we recently wrote, but the basic take home message here is there are so many new radiopharmaceuticals being invested in for diagnostics using PSMA as a target that it's not going away. So if you think this is just a fad, I think hopefully this proves to you that it's not. So hopefully all of you can get on board and start using this. That being said, there is no data out there that shows superiority of a single specific PSMA PET rated pharmaceutical over another. Yes, there are differences, there are nuances, maybe there's, I wouldn't even call them flavors, but just slight differences. But I don't think there's a single shred of compelling evidence that says you should use one versus another. All right, so we're gonna start off with patients at initial diagnosis and staging. Uh, this study comes from Tombo. Bas basically, at initial diagnosis, the sensitivity is only around 40%, which sounds really low. It is, but it's actually better than anything we've had in the past, but I think it's more important to focus on the specificity. If you do see something that's positive, you could be pretty sure that it is prostate cancer. Because it's not, and the reason why this is important is the low sensitivity tells us that it doesn't replace the microscope. So if you were planning a nodal dissection before the PSMA PET, just because you get a negative PET doesn't mean you should not do a nodal dissection. You should still do what you had originally planned to do pre-surgery. But if you found distant METs on a PSMA, then I think it's something that needs a little bit of discussion about how you manage this patient going forward. They may still need a prostatectomy or, or radiation, but I think it should spark a deeper conversation. And if it, anyone has questions about this, let's, I think it's a really intriguing discussion. So biochemical recurrence. Um, this comes from another, another study that shows similar data where at low PSA levels, detection rates are really high. 65% between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. Really, really high. Over two, this study had 100% detection rates. The other thing I'd like to point out is the distribution of disease that you're going to see is going to shock you. It's going to surprise you. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable. You're going to see patients. We, we're used to seeing patients with nodal recurrences only, but bone only we've seen. You're going to see more visceral metastatic disease patients at BCR. You're going to see mediastinal lymph nodes only. So these interesting patterns of recurrence that you need to be comfortable with. And this has led to a really big area of dis discussion called oligometastatic disease. And it's something that we've created because of these better imaging tools. And this comes from Rob Ryder, but it just shows sort of a collage of different studies that shows you know, that maybe this truly is a transitional disease state where we can make a difference. And that's why METS-directed therapy, MDT, is a really hot topic right now. And there are several studies that are showing very strong signal that there's positive impact if you treat these patients. I don't know if it's quite level one evidence yet though. But in reality, a lot of people are doing this and I don't know if they're necessarily wrong. I don't know if they're necessarily right. Uh, oral trials, one of those studies that incorporated uh, conventional imaging with PSMA PET. I won't bore you with the details, but it does show that those patients uh, who were treated where all the lesions were PSMA positive and conventional imaging positive tended to do better when you radiated those lesions. Um, and again, there's another trial called STOMP that shows similar data using um, de de delay of initiation of ADT and some other uh, endpoints. So when we go forward to the M0 CRPC, you know, it's interesting because these three studies, Prosperous Art and Aramis, using uh, drugs for non-metastatic CRPC were approved a few years ago. But they were all performed using uh, conventional imaging. When you actually went back and you took a, a group of those patients who would have qualified who had PSMA PET, turns out r roughly 55% of them actually had M1 disease. So we know that these patients probably were M1, they were probably low volume M1, but they still benefited from this drug, from these drugs. So I think for us at this point, the recommendations would be, you know, don't necessarily use PSMA PET in that disease space. My, our only recommendation for using PSMA in that space is when you think biologically the patient's disease might be a little bit more aggressive, <coughs> and if you get a PSMA PET, you could prove they have M1, you have more tools available to you. So if we go to M1 CRPC, 
this idea of oligoprogressive disease and using METS-directed therapy in those patients. I don't think it's ready for prime time, but there are some studies that show some signal that radiating some of these lesions might lead to an improvement in outcome, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Uh, PSMA PET to evaluate treatment response is something that is a, a growing hot topic in, in our field. I don't think it's ready for prime time yet. So for the time being, PSMA PET should be used more on a, just a initial, like an event basis at initial diagnosis in certain patients and at biochemical recurrence. So in summary, prostate cancer is going to progress in 30, 40% of patients. There's an opportunity here to, 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 to treat our patients better and have an impact. Um, it allows us to detect disease that we couldn't see with conventional imaging. It will absolutely change how you manage your patients. And you need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, but also be prepared. You know, find people around you who, could, you who you could talk together about how you're going to manage these patients. And ideally, that's a multidisciplinary team, whether it's in a tumor board, whether it's just friends, colleagues. Maybe you meet periodically over lunch or breakfast to talk some, over some cases. It's, it's doable and it's fun. So I challenge you to sort of create your own multidisciplinary teams in your communities and find a way to, to really um, advance the field. And there's growing data regarding the improvement in clinical outcomes. So I'm not going to talk too much about appropriate use uh, because I know Dr. Crawford might talk about it in radar. Uh, but just, you know, quickly, at initial diagnosis, it's for patients who you have a high suspicion for metastatic disease. NCCN defines it as intermediate risk unfavorable, intermediate, high, or very high. We in Radar 6 have our own uh, recommendations. We're very similar. Um, use it in patients at biochemical recurrence. The threshold at which you perform it is very controversial. I would say whenever you label someone as biochemically recurrent, you should consider getting a PSMA PET, just as long as you are planning to act on those results. If you don't believe in METS-directed therapy, then I don't know if there's really a reason to get, get it. Um, and then this is a paper that we just published in the European Journal of Nuclear Medicine that talks about how to set up a PSMA program and whatnot. So it's really a resource that maybe you could pass on to your imaging colleagues in your community if they have any questions about how to get started. Uh, and this is Radar 6, which Dave will talk about. Uh, so it's to be continued, so stay tuned. It's a really exciting topic, and we're going to continue to learn more.